Cooper from Lviv, Ukraine. Last night you said it's necessary to be a witness to what's going on in Ukraine. So much of it is disturbing and traumatic, but of course that's the story that's happening. That's the truth. How do you make the editorial decisions of what to show people of this war? Because it's important not to romanticize war. It's also mm -hmm. important not to offend the dignity of those who have suffered. How do, how do you make the decision about what to what to give to us? Yeah, look, I mean, there there are, I mean, there are things one sees in wars that that you don't put on television. I mean, um, you know, any kind of description of, of depravity you can imagine ha happens, and and that's not necessarily something people want to see or that it's appropriate to put on television. But I think that it is important not to sanitize everything so that it just seems like some, you know, just some film or some movie or, or you've seen worse in movies and, and it just doesn't to, to suck the, the reality out of it. And, and I think it's a, it's a fine line and, and, you know, we have a lot of people looking at stuff and I tend to believe that it's, it's important to see what is happening. It's, I know it's hard to look at and after a while, maybe it all starts to look the same. Um, there are people, good, decent people, who were just living their lives and have had their lives completely ripped apart. You know, the people who are fleeing, they're now labeled, they're now refugees, but they're not refugees. They're people just like you and I, and some of them are from Africa, and some of them are from India, and some of them are from Ukraine, and they're fleeing, and their lives are completely destroyed and uprooted, and their families divided, and... I think it's important to see all that and to, to feel what it is like to imagine yourself in their shoes, to have empathy and walk in their shoes. And, and for that, I think you have to see some of what is going on and you have to hear, you know, you have to hear it and, and you have to see it. And, and, and it's hard sometimes to look at it and, but, but to look away to me, um, it's just not an option. I, I just believe that I've seen a lot of places where people just disappear, where their bodies literally disintegrate into the sand or into the earth, and there's no photograph of them that their family has, and there's no there's no marker for them of where they died. And I think there, there's it's a terrible thing to be slaughtered in a war, but to be eviscerated and not have anybody even notice your passing is particularly haunting to me. And I believe in bearing witness to the... The, the dignity of people here, and also the indignity that is being done to people here. What should we, what should the world be paying attention to in the weeks ahead? Um, is there a possibility of negotiations? Uh, is, it, is it these evacuation corridors? What, what is the story you've got your eye out for? Yeah, look, I mean, uh, there, there have been three meetings now between uh, Ukrainian officials and, and Russian officials in, in Belarus. Um, not much has come out, come out of it. Um, I think, you know, I've talked to Ukrainian officials who say, look, you know, they won't say they trust the people that they're talking to. Vladimir Putin is the one who ends up making the decisions. They believe that there may be some places that they can come to some sort of agreement on, but that hasn't happened yet in three meetings. And these this talk of humanitarian corridors, I mean, it, it is a long way from actually happening. The, the few times it's been set up for a very limited window in very limited places, it has not lasted long. Ukrainian officials end up blaming the Russians for violating it. Russians then say, oh, no, it was a Ukrainian, official, Ukrainian military who did. So that has not really worked. Uh, Russia is now saying, oh, you can have a humanitarian corridor to go to back to go into Belarus and Russia. But there's, there's very few Ukrainians who are really wanting to flee into Russia or flee into Belarus when it's Russia, which is attacking uh, Ukraine and attacking it also from Belarus. So there's, there's got to be some sort of intermediary, like the, the International Community of the Red Cross, which does this kind of thing. And there's got to be the will on both sides to create humanitarian corridors to get people out and to get supplies in. Because soon, you know, they're going to, the cities are going to start running out of food and running out of medicine and, you know, this is the Russian campaign. It is it, the surgical strike that they were probably hoping for didn't happen. And now it seems like they are going to have maximum damage to 
break the will of the Ukrainian people. And whether or not that will happen, I, I don't know. But I do, I do believe that, yeah, I don't, I mean, nobody can say what will happen. But, but I, I, I certainly think that the example that Ukrainians have shown thus far of the, dis, the willingness to stand up and fight and resist it, it is just extraordinary to witness, and it's it is it's a privilege and kind of an honor to to be here and be able to you know you know when people it really moves me when people say goodbye to you they the official greeting in the among soldiers and and now even among civilians is you know glory to Ukraine and then the answer to that is glory to the heroes and I think there's something so moving in that. Um, and that is that sort of to me embodies that sort of that spirit that people have here that is not just about their own individual pain and their own individual heartbreak, that it's they're part of something bigger. And I was at a place today where moms whose kids were at the front, whose husbands were at the front, were packing supplies and, you know, literally hand weaving camouflage netting for Ukrainian tanks and 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 artillery pieces. And you know, they're crying on the one hand because their loved one is gone and they feel like this is how they can contribute. And um, it's just, it's an extraordinary thing to witness. Anderson, thank you for being with us. And thank you for the reporting you're doing and of course all your colleagues on the front for showing us the, the barbarism of this invasion and the dignity of the Ukrainians' courageous response. Anderson Cooper reporting from Ukraine, everybody. We'll be right back with Sutton Foster.